Joe. Joe on Joe is the only podcast where Joe talks about Joe. And now, your host, Joe Slepsky. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Joe on Joe. It is me, your host, Joe Slepsky, and this is a very special episode. I told you, I promised you. I'd be back in some way, shape, or form, and this is just a part of it. It's the start of it, you might say, because I've got, I've got an amazingly special interview. I am sitting across from uh, 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 an amazing talent, a spectacular woman who brought more joy to the ears of every single person listening to this than uh, I could possibly describe with any kind of verbiage. You know her from Star Blazers. You know her from... The uh, the early 80s pre-Amazing Friends Spider-Man show. You know her from an episode of Street Hawk. But most <laughs> likely, I would guess, that you might have heard of her character on a little show we love to call G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, the Baroness herself. Morgan Lofting. Morgan, welcome to Joe on Joe. Oh, Joe, I'm so happy to be here. I, can, I cannot tell you how happy I am. <laughs> That's the greatest thing. I, so far in all our, our discussions, I've uh, I've heard hints of the Baroness and just talking to you normally, but that's the first <laughs> time you've turned on the Baroness, and that's that's amazing. Thank you for coming on the show, Morgan. Oh, I am so happy to be here. I really, really, oh, that, see, that doesn't say, they're going to say, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, you remember how the Baroness used to show up and you didn't know it was the Baroness? Well, she was always wearing take, a mask. She would take off the mask. Well, this is, and then I'd tell you, then I'd take off the mask and you'll see who I, okay. <laughs> that was one of the best parts of that show was always the unmaskings everyone oh, there was always oh. almost every episode there's a rubber mask right i know and and, and to hear that switch in the voice was with, just the with, yeah, was, the yeah, was with the glass underneath yeah she always wears the glasses i mean like, have you heard of lenses never mind you know no oh it was perfect i just <laughs> so you are you are um probably one of the most iconic voices in 80s cartoons I would absolutely say you're you're absolutely in the top tier voices. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Broad strokes. What does that? What does that mean? Like, like, how do you get recognized vocally? Do people like? Are you ever out <laughs> and, and talking to someone and you maybe slip into the baroness a little bit? No. And, no. no, nobody would even know. The first time I was aware that anything was going on, I, it was the early 90s I think and I was doing an industrial on camera and one of the guys said something or other and I said oh yeah and and I did the Baroness and G.I. Joe and there was this <gasps> pause and I thought wait what who and I, that was the first time yeah that I became it's very strange um, sensation. I, I mean, and it's mostly guys who will come up. N women come up now, but they're younger women. It was basically the men that saw the show mm -hmm. when it first came out, and they will come up and introduce their families. And it takes a while to get it. You know, am I being con? This, this, uh, yeah. No. These people are very, very sincere. And mm -hmm. so... We're going to talk about some of the incredible people that I've met. G.I. Joe is very generational. I have met through doing wow. this podcast so many listeners who say, we watch it with my kids. We, you know, in now the age of DVD and Blu-ray <laughs> and, and streaming, it's not currently streaming. I wish they would be. But right. yeah, and it's they sit their kids down. And I think it's a testament to, um, number one, to be absolutely as not kiss butt as possible, the acting. Because you guys brought something, you your your good you're, voices. The whole cast of voices were so great and so yeah. there and really yes. acting yes. it, really living it. And then the animation was better than most uh, cartoons at the time. The animation was was just amazing. That the first couple seasons, the yeah, Sun the Glow drive, stuff, yeah. the drive, the music, yeah. and if oh, you the go, music, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. And if you go back and you just watch it, turn the sound off and watch it though, it's. All those layers of sound that yep. drove the show. Yeah. Really, really drove the show, yes. So where are you from originally? What part of the world? Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. 
Why? Well, you want me to talk a little more Oklahoma? Oh, you, okay. Like yeah. I, sure. <laughs> I, that's not a problem. And when did you start uh, uh, acting? Oh, my God. Well, Chautauqua, New York. My father and mother were at the Cleveland Playhouse. And someone tried to drag me on stage to perform with the little kindergarten group. And I said, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want So I suppose that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. And I still, I haven't done theater in a long time, but I still, oh my God. <gasps> Why are you doing this? Are you out of your mind? The most intense. <sighs> You know, run to the bathroom 45 times, and then it's my cue when I'm on stage, and then I, I, I can't even begin to explain it. Mm -hmm. Something similar happened to me in Florence when I had to drive on the autostrada, and uh, there was nobody with me, and I had a rental car, and I had to get out of the parking lot and drive like 20 miles down the road and I had sort of programmed where I was going in my head there was no GPS at this point and I went around around the parking lot and back and forth to the bathroom and around around in the parking lot and my front wheels hit the street and I was fine I w and I was like what just happened so it's like it's like it's like stage fright actors panic and I, then and then as soon as the lights go I, up you're you're in I, you're in the I, mode I don't know because I learned to drive in Manhattan oh yeah yeah and my front wheels hit the pavement in Florence and I was okay here we go and I thought oh please could I bottle this mm -hmm. so that be, <laughs> so all I can do is remember that I have this facility I remember it's okay. Go ahead. Have a panic. Go ahead. And it looks like Spider Man as Aunt May and Felicia Hardy, the black cat, was uh, your first. Uh, like, so how did you get that assignment? Like, what was, um, what, was it, what was it? You were living in L.A. or? Yeah, I'd come down to L.A. for well, you know, you hang around a long time and do a lot of stuff. But I got the audition. Um, can't remember if it was John Jerwich or Wally Burr, but anyway, I, I went in and I just. And Don Jerwich was so sweet. He always said that he thought that my Aunt May was just top Aunt May. So I really loved it. And then, of course, there's the black cat. Ah. You know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and playing evil, I have to tell you, is so much fun. <laughs> well, the black cat would have been very new at the time as a character. So you probably was are the she? first person to ever voice her. Yes. <gasps> there she was created in like 1979, 78-ish era there is a there is a spider-man before there were so many iterations were, of spider-man yeah. yeah i well i'm not sure well, if there was black six, cat was in it yeah or there not, was the 66 like the 60 okay. 60 was a 69 spider-man or 68 late 60s that's the one with the theme song everyone you know okay. knows and then i my understanding is your version was uh, oh. it was the precursor to the oh. Amazing Friends one? Well, I'll, t I'll take it. And that. I'm pretty sure okay. you'd be the first person to voice Black Cat. Oh, okay, so that's pretty great. Oh, and I found the dolly online. Oh, really? Yes, and I I took one out, and uh, somebody wanted it with my autograph on it out at the Transformer show so in Burbank. Do, do you have any recollection of uh, getting the call for GI Joe? Like, was it um, just when we were talking to Bill Ratner about it? He said it was just a big casting call and a lot of people coming in for well, it and all that stuff. I didn't see a lot of people at the studio. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, there's a oh one of those great manuals that Jim Sorensen and and Bill mm -hmm. put together. I did the afterward mm -hmm. in Volume Two of GI Joe, and I talk about just going in and they had you want to hear about yeah oh we want to hear everything okay as much as you're as much as okay. it's not repetitive for I will, you i will never oh everything, <laughs> oh, everything about no we don't. all right you've i'm gonna enough. shut up you've now. done enough conventions. i know yeah okay um you, you get the script uh there's a description of the character there's a, with a drawing of the character just black and white drawing how close did the drawing look to what she eventually looked like oh it, I, as i recall it was, it was it yeah yeah which, which is what? Just fa in a, fa Jim a fabulous book. look. Yeah. Fabulous. Look. Oh, yeah. It defined yeah. that black leather look, defined bad girls uh, for decades. Like, oh, my God. Real, real oh, look. my God. In fact, I had a Halloween costume. I actually. Did you? Really? I still have the gun. I oh, still have. Do you have pictures of you in that? No. I mean, could, could you imagine being at a Halloween party? 
no. at the height of G.I. Joe, and someone walks in looking like the Baroness and sounding literally exactly like the Baroness. <laughs> That would have been, but that I didn't wear the Halloween costume till ten years later. So <laughs> was, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, and you had if I was the Baroness, I had to have a push up bra. Oh, well, so sure. that I had the cleavage, of course. Sure. <laughs> yeah. And a really tacky black wig. I apologize for that. But anyway. Oh my God. So so here's the picture, here's the script. Um, and then you go outside or you go somewhere where the other the competition, because mm-hmm. that's who they are is not going to hear what you want to do. And you can kind of begin to hear yourself. This was a long time ago before there were phones, so you couldn't record yourself if you were at the audition. Right. Yes. So you couldn't hear the playback. Um, and I must have gone outside and hollered, and there was an indication that it was supposed to be somewhere in Europe. I, it must have said Middle Europe. Because I don't know why I would have picked this if I hadn't. <laughs> see, you know, I mean, what? Yeah, okay. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a Russian accent. It is not no, a Russian, not. no. Um, and I really, honest to God, think the thing that probably clinched it, which nobody truly has ever heard unless they were at the... Because whenever I do a table read and it's the Baroness, I will say, okay. We're all going to do Cobra together in a big room, and I never use the mic, and we all yell Cobra. Mm-hmm. I think that's what clinched the audition. I really? Honest to God, do. Yes. Because, like I said, nobody's, nobody's ever really heard it. Because when it's on television, it's all compressed. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, great, they're going to do the movie, and it's going to be... And then I didn't do it in the movie Hmm. talk about really pissed Mm -hmm. yes because i thought wow i want to i want to hear it on the big screen yeah you know and everybody gets such a kick out of it usually i'm like we're all gonna yell cobra you know yeah yeah well the the movie was that transitional you know (sighs) driven by the toys they had to get to the next toy line and so i think a lot of a lot of a lot of the people that we were there to see got a little bit of a short (laughs) shrift in that uh huh. No bet. You think? <laughs> and and nobody. I don't think because remember we're talking about eight, nine, ten year old boys. We're not particularly forthcoming with any sort of fantasies, mm. and this was before we talked about avatars. Yeah. Right. Publicly, right. and so nobody knew. It was a, a, they had no idea what to do with. Oh God. You know, girls. Well, girls have to have a guy, right? Yeah. If you don't have, oh. I mean, that that adage oh. uh, as far as like girls' toys don't sell and all that stuff, that's still prevalent today. Oh, it's just please. in the last maybe ten years that they're starting to make a turn. But it forever. It was the toy oh, people saying, know. "We know what sells, and it's not girl toys." Blah blah blah. Yeah. Well, of course, it' not going to sell if it's not in the store. Right. I well, looked yeah. for my Moon Racer. The the Transformer character right, right, right. came out a year ago. It was the first time. The f- <laughs> wow. You know, so anyway. So do you remember when, when you got the call that said, um, hey, you've got G.I. No. Joe? Like, do you remember Sorry. that? Sorry. Yeah. God, no. I, I remember the first session because Don Don recorded, uh, recorded the first three sessions. I, I just remember, you know, meeting everybody. Mm-hmm. And nobody knew who Chris Latta was. Nobody had the faintest idea about Chris Latta. Where'd this guy come from? You know, because it's sort of a little incestuous bunch in voiceover, and yeah. uh, nobody knew. And there wasn't um, YouTube, so we couldn't go online and find out what Chris Collins did. You know, there, mm-hmm. yeah, it was I want to ask world. you about Chris Latta. Um, could be because he's he's he passed mid nineties. I want to, uh, I believe, um, and you must have worked with him a, a ton because your oh, scenes yeah. were. All, I know you guys sure. worked in the same room together, and yeah. being on Cobra, you were in the room with him. Um, how how was he? Was he was he? he what was, was he like? What he was, was a very strange bird. Yeah. If you've ever watched, have you watched his YouTube, his stand up stuff? No, I don't know that oh, I've ever seen that. Uh, dark glasses. There's a great little YouTube vignette where bill shatner introduces him and he basically the real the real bullshit 
Yeah. Like, like actual bills. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And 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 he looks at Shatner like like he's wiping something off his shoe and and goes on stage and it's and I saw him perform. It's death by laughter. I mean, he's just he just will eviscerate you. Mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and then of course everybody, you know, everybody, everybody does the Cobra Commander. They do. Yeah. I know. You know. No, we're not casting, but thank you for playing. And uh, then Greg Berger. Mm-hmm. And you certainly know Greg Berger, um, and Chris and I decided to put. I have a copy of this, by the way. Okay. Decided to put together an ad for Hollywood Reporter. It was the something something animation anniversary of Hollywood Reporter, and we went out and we put together an ad with just the three of us. Okay. And Chris found the guy who was going to just do a lot of the sketching for the ad, and that was about all. He did. He came along with us, and he was very quiet, and it was me and Greg doing the talking. It was a totally different guy. There there was no mask. Mm-hmm. There was no character, and it was just a very, very quiet. You could almost forget he was with you. Hmm. It w- yeah, it was interesting to think about. Yeah, so you, yeah. You, you guys were friends. You guys were... No. No? no? Oh, no. No, no, no. no. no we, we hung out because yeah. you hang out at a session, but yeah. but no. And his daughter, oh, my God, his daughter showed up at a... Um, she was a surprise guest at a table reading over here at a, at a BotCon. Okay. That Fun Public ran. Oh, my God. I can't even remember how long ago this was. Um, and she was just enchanting. She is... Daddy would be very proud. Oh, she great. was just, and everybody was so tickled to meet her. Just is, does she follow? Is she a voice actress? Does you she know, follow I'm not sure what yeah. she's doing. I'm really not. I mean, the first time I saw her, she was like four years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, a little person running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but. what was your when you first heard his Cobra Commander? Because it's so. I mean, it's so distinctive. It is so well, out we, there. What was your reaction? Like, was well, it like they chose? They chose we know, wisely. We know why he got hired. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! I I walked into a session to do a uh, Ben Ten session, and mm-hmm. I had been away from the business for years because I I went to university and did fabulous things there. But I came into the Ben Ten session, and here you go, you know, white hair, yeah, hey, sure. And uh, the director was Sue Blue, and she said, "Hey, I haven't heard your voice in a while." And I said, "Hey, Sue." And Derek Wyatt had actually drawn a character for me oh created it i mean wow yes and ben 10's a great show thank you yeah it really is really tickled to be on it i'm i'm a little i'm a little robot with great big (laughs) called festina any anyway (laughs) i've seen the images and that name it sounds like sounds like you should be on masters of the universe (laughs) with a name like festina i know okay (laughs) and and so here's this you know lady with the white hair and i'm there and i Sure, everybody's thinking like, who in the hell is this? And yeah. where did she come? And what what a, I said to Derek, what do you want her to sound like? And he said, um, well, deeper than the Baroness. And I thought, okay. Um, so I kind of did a little Arnie. She <laughs> sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anyway, yes. yes and yes, and yes. and you you must have worked obviously. I, you're you sit alongside Arthur Burkhart quite a bit. I see him at the shows, so you guys must have worked together quite a bit. Oh yeah, I mean, obviously, sure. Duster and Baroness. How what was that relationship like? You know, it was it was all at the session. Yeah, it was just all at the session, Joe. I mean, you know, once in a while we might run into one another at a party. I'm trying to think. I don't think. Well, I am friends with uh, Jean Jackson, who is married to Neil Ross. Oh, so awesome. there's mm-hmm. you know a relationship that has gone on forever. In fact, I'm going to dinner down at G- Jean Cooks. What? I'm going to dinner on Saturday. Yes. Well, tell him I said hello. Well, tell him I Joe will. and Joe says hi. Well, I will. <laughs> okay, but no, I think that's the only real. 
Yeah. And when do you do you recall when like the um the conventions first started for you guys? Like when you first started getting the oh, calls? Well, to say hey, GI Joe convention stuff. I think Wally Burr probably mentioned my name to Fun Public, which was Pete Sinclair and Brian Singer at the time. Mm. And this was maybe hmm, the early the Audis, the mm-hmm. two the two Audis, whatever we're calling them. That was the first one. And Rose Rosemary Ward. Oh yeah. Also, yeah. right. Was somehow connected with getting me involved in that. So it's only been like the last twenty years that you've been doing the convention circuit. Oh yeah. You know? Maybe the fifteen. And how do you like yeah. it? How do you like it? Oh I love it. I love it. Hey, I got a free ride to London, honey. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> so earlier you were teasing us with some of the some of the uh, people you've met. What's your favorite type of fan to meet? Well, I don't know that it's favorite. It's it's memorable. Mm. Memorable people. There was a guy, um, Neri Lemus, who was my agent for this, and I were out in, oh my God, 20 miles north of here. And this guy came and he said, I have come just to meet you. I was born in Iran. I used to listen to the show in English in Amazing. Iran. Amazing. And he is now doing something amazing at Caltech. So there's an interesting person. Yeah. A very interesting person. I met some strange birds. We won't go into them. Okay. <laughs> we can if you'd like. No, no thanks. No, I, I'm... I <laughs> Have ra- people brought um, some crazy memorabilia for you to sign? Yes. Like stuff, like stuff you never knew was ever made? Oh, or yeah. They've or... brought things that they've either created by taking... Um, video off the screen mm-hmm. or or they've drawn it themselves or Ro- Robbie Musso I have well I mean obviously he's a he's an artist mm-hmm. I have an original that he gave me awesome of the Baroness that's well, what's it's too bad this is all radio well my, um, my, my favorite part of fandom is when the fans get old enough to be influencers themselves so like when, oh. you, go, when you go back and see all the people who grew up watching Star Trek then they go out in the world and they become engineers oh. and they work at NASA and they bring all these conceptual ideas to the real or world or industrial like yeah, magic exactly. and they're taking yes. on the seat. Yes. so now people who grew up watching G.I. Yes. Joe are now working in animation and, m- and producing yes. and directing and they're going sure. hey let's bring this back because yeah. I love it that's one of my favorite things to well, see well that's where Derek Wyatt I'm sure that is one of the things that got him into art the guy who drew Festina for me mm-hmm. yeah yeah. here's here's a character that I met in uh, Springfield Illinois great Lincoln Museum by the way if absolutely you're nearby. oh you've been there oh well, I've been to, I've, I'm from Chicago yeah I've been oh, for Springfield okay. yeah okay. absolutely oh, wow I think it I was, was at the Lincoln Museum, Museum when I was like in, in, the, in the mid 80s it would have been uh, it was during the state fair it was like the big Illinois oh, state fair we went down okay. there I'm pretty sure we hit the Springfield Museum Okay. My recollection of that is my mother came home with a, a, a subscription to uh, encyclopedias. Oh she got suckered into buying, the, buying okay. the encyclopedias with the yearly updates. And my father was like, we're buying what now? And that was when that was a big boondoggle. So, yeah. So oh. we still have encyclopedias at my parents' house on the shelf. Well, I have, <laughs> I have my Encyclopedia Britannica, yep, and yep. it's anchoring my bookshelves in the other room. <laughs> um, okay. Where was I? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. The Springfield guy. Springfield, you, by the way, Springfield, Illinois, Springfield, G.I. Joe, oh. home of Cobra. You know that, right? No. Oh, yeah. That was Springfield was always the name of Cobra's hometown, like where Cobra would set up their secret base. Oh, my God. And, I had no idea. Yeah. And they'd call it. Oh, my God. They call it Springfield, but they would never say the state. It was very much like Simpsons. So it was <sighs> welcome to Springfield. And it was like G.I. Joe never knew exactly what Springfield oh, it was oh, and all that. OK. Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. I okay. didn't. You have to go back because they have a Civil War. Oh, what would you call it? Oh, my God. It's a it's a documentary, but it lights up for each one of the battles. Oh, wow. And at the same time that the battles are lighting, it has a rolling toll of the dead and the wounded oh, on both. It's absolutely brilliant the guy i met there was in the secret service and he said you would be amazed how many people in the secret service are gi joe fans awesome yes wow yes well uh, there's a lot of service guys are like yeah they got inspired when they're at a Mm -hmm. young age Mm -hmm. to join up for for the camaraderie i mean that's what gi joe was all about 
um, for, for me. And I think even reflecting oh, back on okay. it, it was about the teamwork and the camaraderie. I, I feel like I, I never personally, I never approached it from like a military fetishism like kind okay. of thing. I was okay. always like, they're a bunch of superheroes with superpowers, <laughs> right? With Super they've all, yeah, Good. like they've all got their yeah. specialties, okay. you know. And and that was for me, that was always the draw. And Cobra worked in the exact same fashion as the great supervillain teams worked. They were each so strong, but it was their egos that that brought down the plot, which is what we're going to see in today's episode. <laughs> We're watching Spell of the Siren oh, today. Oh, all right. I, I'm. So, and, oh my god. And and I've got. I I don't know. When was you remember this episode, right? Where where you get the the conch oh, shell? God, you know. I mean, this is like this You're, is like one of your top. Apps. Okay, I I will as we will. I have yes. one more person I want to tell you. Oh, about. you please. Oh yeah, yeah. This was at the at the Transformers just this past couple months. A young woman who's in the military, and we never talked specifics. But I'm very well aware that women in the military. <laughs> it's hey, tough. Yeah. Tough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a chauvinist world. And something happened with her. We never discussed what it was. But we kind of bonded over the fact that she was there. And I think I had been very important to her, probably only fairly recently, because she, I'm sure, wasn't more than 24 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So there's that That's side great. of it too. That's great. Yeah. 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 Uh, she well, even came back the second day. It was kind of amazing. That is what's so lovely about the conventions is, is you guys can put, especially as a voiceover actor, even like if you're a, if you're, a, if you're a live actor, I think, you know, like say in, in film, you can go and you can see your stuff being reacted to on screen in a theater or when you're doing it in the moment, there's, you know, couple dozen people on set at the time you know Mm -hmm. with voice actors it's it's you guys in a room you're not even seeing the final product at all whatsoever with a one or two voice directors yeah and it's and it's so isolated to then be able to reach out across the decades literally across the decades have never seen this oh wow as well yeah Sure. You know, yeah. I, d- I didn't get up on Saturday morning or Friday <laughs> evening or, or what? Whatever. It was what? a job. You life? Here's what? your script. Here's your call <laughs> time. Here's your check. Thank you. You don't think. So that... I've got questions for you about okay. the DIC era. When you, when, when. Dick? It, yeah. Do it cheap. <laughs> when, when it went from Sunbow to the DIC stuff, you were one of the uh, Dick, handful please, of voices. Say we're going yeah. to talk. Okay, well, well, we'll go there. You were one of the handful of voices Not to go over Dick. and work for them. Yeah, me and what, Chris. What was that? Uh, what was that decision all about? What was that? What was that experience like? Was um, it? We we just uh, recorded in isolation. Yeah. I mean, I never even saw Chris when we did the recording. I guess they felt they couldn't. Canada did not at that time, and I stress at that time, have depth. Yeah. In cartoon voices, they oh, yeah. oh, they they, oh, yeah. they were babies. And so there wasn't, I mean, I've never heard the shows, so I don't know, but I would imagine that the energy is nowhere near the same. It's funny you say that. It really is flat. It is really, yeah. it's very flat. Everyone's yeah. very monotone. Um, I, outside of literally a lot of the quote unquote American heroes sounding actually Canadian. But <laughs> but the just the, ten, the tenor of the show is actually very flat. You're, yeah. you're totally right. And then you get yeah. this burst of energy with you or with Chris. Right. Um, I think Arthur Burkhart did a couple of Destros. Most of the Destros were did different, he? but I think there were a okay. few. Maybe like the first miniseries was him. I'm trying to remember right now as we're talking. I met. But, well, but it's like this burst of energy, and then you go back to, oh, oh hey, no, let's go get it. Cobra, eh? You know? <laughs> <laughs> it was no doubt hanging out in Montreal. Yes, okay. Yeah. And, Great. Uh, so after G.I. Joe, you... Um, you were listed as a, a voice on Total Recall, the Schwarzenegger movie. What yeah. did you do on that? Well, that whole um, section that was supposed to be the alien planet sort of looked like, I don't know, really bad Mexican cantina. <laughs> okay. Mars, yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's actually shot in Mexico, and it was <laughs> shot M O S, which means Mit. Out of sound, oh. because Eric von Stroheim, who was a German director, said, we will shoot this MOS. He wasn't using mit out sound. Really? But he said mit out sound. Awesome. Yes. Yes. So, so you provide a lot of the background noises oh, in the yeah. bar and stuff like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very and cool. And the Walla. Oh, Walla's fun. Walla. 
Oh my God, you don't know about Walla. Was Walla, is that the face lady who screams? No. no. Who's Walla? Walla is, okay, you got a bar scene. Yeah. You and I are the principals. We're sitting at the bar. We got a lot of people behind us all at the tables. Mm -hmm. Now, they may shoot a master shot of the two of us having our dialogue. Then they may shoot a close-up of you. Then they may shoot a close-up of me. When they go into editing, who knows? They may go master shot, then me, then you. Then. But what about all these people in the background who are sitting there and who are having a high old time? It's not going to match. Right. So everybody's in the background is going, and what I'm doing, people, is just <laughs> moving my <laughs> mouth and no sound is coming out. And then in post-production, actors go in and they add the noises. They add the voices. They add the and is that called Walla? Yes. It's referred to as Walla. Is, is, walla. That, is that the noise you make? Like, is it like, do you well, do like it's kind of Walla. walla, walla because walla, walla, you're walla. not necessarily going to be able to differentiate no, any of You just of need the sounds. background hum of it. You need the background hum, yes. It's great. That's you what it's called, some. Walla. It's called Walla. That's awesome. I know. I did. Uh, oh, my God. What did I do? The Paul Verhoeven movies. I did Basic Instinct. Oh, you did? Oh, yes. As well as Total Well, yeah, Total Recall, sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's we great. And, and, and so specifically working on his films, like, did you know his casting director? Or like, how did you keep getting his there movies? There was a guy called Norman Schwartz. Now, there are a lot of people who actually have Walla Group. Um, Norman Schwartz at the time was himself an editor. So he would go in and he would help to edit on mm -hmm. the Walla. In fact, I remember being on the set with Norman and the gang and uh, Mel Brooks. Why? Yeah. Why? Oh, sorry, hold on. Let me pick that up. You just dropped that. Here you go. Here's that, here's that name. Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. Oh, yes. my goodness. Yes, we were doing Spaceballs. You did, you did Walla on Spaceballs? I did Walla on Spaceballs. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. And and here, oh, and Annie called a couple times. Remember? Oh, Dwight and yeah, Bancroft. Of course. Annie called. Okay. While we were on set, we waited. Well, and you, you, you do wait for an Anne Bancroft. Oh, you, you my God. You give her whatever God. time she yes. needs. Yes, she's yes, fantastic. Please. Yeah, oh, God my bless God. her. Rest in peace. I adore yeah. her. Um, Anyway, it came to the, the little the little marching dinkies, whatever they were called. Uh, like the stormtrooper. Oh, the oh, the little Ewok dudes. The little yeah, sand, the little Jawa. The little yeah, I forget people. what they called. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. and uh, what did Mel say? He said, "Well, we'll we'll do this later." Well, and Norman said, "No, no, no, my people can do this." But yeah, they re they really can. Well, we'll give it a shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we all got up. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and, and Brooks sits there going, okay, I guess that worked. <laughs> it totally worked. So, I know. Oh, that's great. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, fun. fun that's stuff. so much fun. It is fun. Yeah, and it's, it's just, it's like, yeah, it's like you get to see your, your, all these experiences just pop up in pop culture oh all the time. God. Very. Oh, my like, God. And so I have never seen that total recall other than in a black and white work print. Oh. I've never seen it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. You I know, imagine. It's fun. But well, Fear Hoban was great for satire at the time. Like, he, like, nailed it. For There was, like, oh. a five- or six-year period where he was in. Oh, Robocop, he, that movie. Like, yes. he's, I mean, yeah. Even oh the my God. Star Trek Troopers, which at first people were like, it's terrible. But then they reflected and were like, oh, no, okay. it's saying everything. Ro Robocop is Peter Weller, right? Peter Weller, the actor, yeah. You know that Peter Weller now has a doctorate He's in Renaissance brilliant. art. Yes. yes. He is absolutely yes. brilliant. It yes. didn't hurt that he was Peter Weller. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That but tends yes. to open a few doors for but you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just kind of. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just so love that period. I so adore Florence because you walk around and you go, Oh my God! There's something I've just seen in a book. So let's talk about that. So you oh. said that you took a little time off from from the uh, VO game and you went back to school. I had already had an AA degree. I went back. I got my bachelor's. I stayed and got a master's in sort of early modern history, women's studies, and a period that's sort of 300 BCE to 400 AD. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. The short. Right. The sure. Uh, the know, as one does. It's called the Hellenistic period. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm, I of mean, course, no. you know, oh, my God. And then after I got my master's, I went to USC 
for three years towards my doctorate. And then that it just, because I think I'm an actor, mm -hmm. there was that tension. Yeah. Um, I loved it. I adore the knowledge. Whenever I travel, I'm, I'm traveling not just horizontally, I'm traveling vertically. I'm going all the way back as far as anything written of the period goes, and I'm, I was in Syracusa in Sicily where the Greeks landed in 700 BC. Wow. Or so, yes, and I'm trotting around and looking at the graves and looking at the... And is, it, is it just coming to life in your mind's eye? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I come home and I am just overwhelmed because I'm bringing so much to it the art and the social situation and the culture and i'd been to turkey okay where i took a little boat called a gullet which is a flat bottom boat so it has to hug the coast we're in the eastern mediterranean on the ionian sea and this little boat. there were 15 of us four of them were crew members and the cook Thank God for the cook. <laughs> and they would drop us off, and we would take a bus, and we would go in, and we would go to the old Greek city-states and climb to the top where there's still the ruins of the Temple of Athena. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. I mean, wow. And even Amsterdam, wow. I have found, and I didn't realize I had this ability to hover over the map of a city and kind of get a sense of where I am. And also, I take videos in my mind. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I will be talking to you, and I'll get a flash yeah. of walking past the Pitti Palace in Florence. And, and it's just a little, it's just, I mean, so I know why I'm tired when I come home. <laughs> <laughs> You're time traveling as well as physically traveling. Oh, I traveling, am, yeah. I am, I am. And, and it's hard for me to travel with anybody because most people want to shop or they want to eat. And, and I'm going like, no, no, there's an old Roman hole in the ground down the road. We have to go, <laughs> you know, you know. So, yes, I, That's have fantastic. A, I have a very lovely life of the mind. I love, I I love, really I do. love hearing that. You were well deserved, well earned. Uh, where's the uh, where's the place that you need to get that you haven't gone yet that you really want to visit or, or? I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I have never been to Germany. I've never been to the Eastern Europe. Um, I've never been to Scandinavia. The Baroness I has to never Spain. been. The Baroness has never been no. to Eastern Europe. No, no, like I have <laughs> never gone. No, you know that tracks. Um. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, I don't know. That's great. No, we'll, that's great. We'll see. Very I'm happy. Spain. Very happy My God, that. I've never been to Spain. Well, Morgan. Yes. I'm very excited today. We're going to watch Spell of the Siren. <gasps> All right. Um, so, uh, our listeners, um, thank you for tuning into Joe on Joe. Thank you for following me on Facebook and Instagram at Joe on Joe Pod. Uh, send me an email to Joe on Joe Pod at gmail.com and check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash Joe on Joe Pod. We've got more exciting things such as this interview in the cooks. I'll, I'll t Morgan, I'll tell you a little bit about okay, that later. Okay, what We're, are I'm we doing? doing? Oh, no, no, I'm doing some very exciting things. So you, oh, my God, I would love to have you participate, but we're down the road from that. <laughs> I'm hyping it for later because, uh, yeah. You should leave it. Oh, I'm hyping it. What are you hyping? Oh, hyping. Oh, I can't tell you now. Oh. I'm very, that's what I'm saying, guys. Okay. I'm really excited. There's a handful of people that know about this. And oh, it's oh, it's going to oh. be very fun. Okay. Um, so, listeners, thank you so, 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 so much. Uh, you guys are great. And um, Morgan, is there anywhere on social media? Are you on social media? No. I forgot to ask before we started. No. no. Life is short. Yeah. So here's the deal, guys. <laughs> you want to you wanna meet Morgan Lofting? Get off your butt and go to a convention because uh -huh. she makes the appearances. Do you know when the next one is off the uh, top of your head? The next one's in Lake Elsinore coming up in, um, oh, my God, the 5th. The May 5th, 5th of May. Oh, May 5th. Sunday. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, this will this will drop next week. So, guys, Lake Elsinore. Lake Elsinore. May yeah. 5, Sunday. Do um, it. Yeah. And That's, then I'm yeah. going to be in Dayton and then a Raleigh show and a San Jose show in uh, the end of August. Love it. And then Greenville in South Carolina in November. July for Dayton and Raleigh. You hear that, so you Dayton? Can, you can find. The home of Toilet Teal. Get out there. Toilet Teal's my wife. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. <laughs> we give code names on the show, oh, and and oh she's from Dayton, God. and her oh. name she chose her name to be Toilet Teal. So okay, my <laughs> which is forty miles away, by the way, from where I used to go visit my grandmother in South Ina. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, uh, good people from Ohio. Yeah, good people. You notice a lot of them are from Ohio. Yeah, they leave. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> they see the lake yeah. on fire and they're like, "I gotta go." Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. think it does that anymore. <laughs> they did. They cleaned that up. Yeah, so right. um, it's, it's, oh, that always felt like a Cobra scheme, by the way. <laughs> We're going to set the lake on fire. <laughs> Stop us if you can, G.I. Joe. Yes. So, um, <laughs> all right, listeners. So get ready with your disc. Remember, we're watching Spell of the Siren. And uh, here we go. And here we go. So this is uh, such a fabulous intro. When was the last time you even saw this? Intro? Oh my God, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I think we're we're about to see you very shortly as GI Joe uh, lands on the carrier. There's Burkhart, your your betrothed. <laughs> oh please, yes. your betrothed Destro, oh, God. who gets thrown from a flying airplane and caught. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have jump any of, Arthur jump did you what? have any of these toys when you were when you were working like did like did uh, they ever send any to the it, studio or anything no they never sent anything I did have a game I remember I went to uh, Griffin Bacall in New York and uh, got a game and I gave it to my son um, it was really hard to find the Baroness Dolly mm-hmm. folks and then <laughs> it ended up falling through the I don't know, falling through the grill in my old Ford Mustang. <laughs> and I think set it on fire later when my son was driving it. Yes. So Spell of the Siren, written by Jerry and Carla Conway. Uh-huh. That is some good lineage. Do you know Jerry? No. Jerry is one of the top, top comic book writers of that era. Oh, like he no. He wrote the death of, the, of uh, Gwen Stacy. He created the Punisher. Like he's he's a big time name in comic oh, books, okay. so this is really okay. good lineage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He's he's probably at a lot of the cons that you. Oh that my you god, do. he I, might he, be. He I must will be. watch yeah. for him. Yeah. Jerry Conway's a real talent. I mean, so, I I know Larry. I have a I have a T shirt where I have all sorts of guys who worked on the original stuff, including Sam Spear, the original large doll, designed the original large oh, really? doll. Really? Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. And so T-shirt yeah. meaning with a photo on it or no, people's no, no. autographs? No, it, no, It's just a show, and there were a whole bunch of writers and artists there, and I happened to have a, a little pen that, oh, you know, yeah. never washed, never worn, but I've got everybody. But that's awesome. Oh, God. Every, that's I really know. awesome. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. So we open on okay. uh, the Joes. They are... Um, this may be it. Oh. Does that look familiar? Hello, darling. Yeah. <laughs> So the Joes are chasing after Cobra, who are, uh, they're going after this conch shell, which okay. is, you know, underwater. And so that was the first time we got uh, the Baroness introduced. Okay. And you were, you were in, your, uh, in your aqua gear. Oh, and there's... Who are those guys? No, that's Tomac and Zayma. Okay. And they're the, uh, they're the twins who were like the... Um, uh, the lawyer. Oh, oh the I hear someone. Our commanders could be powerful allies or dangerous foes. It is unwise to provoke them. It's like you're in the room. It's unwise <laughs> to provoke them. What am I wearing? I love of a that you were scu- you were scuba diving in oh. your full leather Baroness outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it's music lured a thousand sailors um, to do So you might find this funny. Above. So the way they color Destro with Arthur Burkhart's, you know, strong African American sound. Right. And his shirt was never I never caught that being a flesh color. I always thought it was like a yellow shirt. I always just thought he was a black dude underneath there. <laughs> I never knew he was supposed to be Scottish. Oh, I know. Isn't that like, okay. But he's such a great voice. He's, yeah. so, oh, he's, he's so amazing. Yeah. And, and that, there's another one everybody tried. Oh, there's Lady Jane. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Or is that Ladies, Scarlet? No, that's Lady oh, Jane. Lady You're Jane. absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Mary Mac. Oh, oh God. And look there's at Bill all Ratner, this. Flint. Oh, my God. Now, what did you think of when they played around with the, uh, the flirtatious Flint uh, Baroness romantic subplot you know, every once I in a while. I very vaguely remember some of the, as, as I said, they didn't know what to do with the women unless they gave them a guy. Like, yeah. hello. You know, yeah. But anyway. 
<laughs> so it was fun. You know, it's fun. Oh, 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 evil, evil. Okay. Evil, evil. You're winning, though. Baroness, I know, I know. Baroness does really well in this opening scene. She's the only one that gets out. So in a scene like this, are you all in the room for all this at the same time? Generally not. Not the way Wally liked to work. He liked to work. Ooh, what am I going to do now? It will be a escape pod. There you are. A escape pod. Oh. So you, would, you wouldn't be with the other actors? Not necessarily. Right, I know. You had to have razor room between actors because we sh recorded before they drew anything. Mm -hmm. So they never knew exactly where they were going to put the <laughs> uh, fights or the laughs or the, yeah. So it really wasn't, for actors, and I've done shows where we leave razor room it's more fun to be in the room together because you get to play off one another. You the term play off using, that energy. The term you're using, razor, razor room? Razor room, a place to cut for okay. the editor. Okay. A space to cut. So you and I are talking. Talk to me while I'm talking to you, you see? So right, yeah. So there's no there razor no room. There's no razor room. So you would say a line of dialogue. Hello there, darling. How are you? Razor room. I'm very good, Baroness. There you go. Yeah, so something like yes, that. Yeah, and yes. so so, and I could see how that would take the energy out of it because you're not you're not interacting as much as well. Right? You, you, there was too much razor room there. Oh, but, okay. but 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 yes, just, and plus I'll take the that fact. As a critique. Okay. Plus the <laughs> oh come on. <laughs> plus the fact when when you're actually doing it. I mean, I was I was looking at you. You and I were looking at yeah. one another. You wouldn't because your script is in front of you. You're facing the mic, and as soon as I turn away to look at you, you know, I, you just lost my voice. Yeah. So, but there's a energy that's created by having actors all in a room together. Mm -hmm. It's the incredible energy that nobody can really get if they haven't performed, and then in two hours it's you're expending an eight-hour like day's worth of energy. Yeah. Um, and and you're, you're, you're driving, you're driving off that. It can be exhausting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like you and me talking together. Would this be the same if you and I, would we read our lines the same way? No. If they would no. be, no. Totally, totally. No. I, when, I, yeah. when I've recorded, um, I, I made a, the most I'll ever do in a day is two, even if like I have like oh. two or three. Because I, I what totally I quickly what I quickly learned, yeah, even just yeah. doing the podcast, mm -hmm. because you're 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 sitting, you're you're upright, your 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 brain is focused on the moment, and your your energy, your mm -hmm. your internal energy mm -hmm. is so high. As soon as you're done recording, you're just like, oh. So if, oh. I, if I'm doing a Skype interview, like that'll uh, be it for the day. I'm good. I'll do the recording, oh, yeah. and then I'll just go chill for the rest of the day. I'm oh, like, that okay. was the funny thing I didn't tell you about the Transformers. The convention. Mm -hmm. Should I tell you about that? Sure. Okay, it's Saturday. All the actors have been there. I mean, everybody's been there, but the actors, awesomes, have been there since 9 o'clock in the morning. It's 5 o'clock, and we're all wiped, man. <laughs> that we're on the floor, and some little chipper person comes by and says, Oh, now we're going to do the table read over in the auditorium. Come on. Oh. Like, oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Well, we're all performers, so yep. we did it. Yep, you, you, you mustered know, it up. We, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> so here we go, Baroness using the conch, the power of the yes. conch for the first time. Oh. And look at, look at what happens. Oh. All the dudes... Oh, I love it. And all of a sudden, Cobra has a preponderance of female <laughs> soldiers, which I, was not the case in any other I episode. Know, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Except for Cover Girl. She doesn't get taken out. Oh. She's she's hefting gung ho pretty well. <laughs> gung Ho's a big dude. Good for her. Well, why are you surprised, darling? Yeah, well, she you know she eats her well, wheaties and well, well. drinks her Cheerios. It worked. See, look at that. Everyone's a zombie. It's oh. so cool. Where do I get my conch shell from? <laughs> what a great yeah. What this, this is great. It seems you have given me the perfect weapon against GI Joe. You. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. This is the ego that comes into play. Oh, yeah. Where Cobra could have done so much better, but everyone's their own little fiefdom, right? Well, yeah. And so every, they can't work together. They of can't go, not. we've got this amazing tool. Let's use it to, you know, Cobra Commander is always 
call in G.I. Joe to say, hey, look what I just did. And then they're I like, know. oh, we didn't even know I that. Know. Thank you. Now we're going to go stop you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, or in yeah. this case, they're attacking her. By the oh. way, this is amazing. You, you stopped Tomax mid, mid leap. <laughs> fantastic. No, my former commander. The treason. It is destiny. Oh, that's it so good. So we're going to go to commercial. Oh. And we're going to be right back with some more destiny. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Listeners, you've heard me talk about it before, and I'm telling you again, the Dreamer Comics Podcast with Omar Spahi is the best source for any aspiring comic book creator to learn how to realize your dreams. Every week, Omar talks with a comic book industry veteran about how they broke into the business and the steps they took to take their talent to the next level. If you want to learn what it takes to publish, color, ink, letter, pencil, or write comic books, this is the podcast for you. Please give it a listen. Look for Dreamer Comics Podcast wherever you listen. And now back to the show. Now back to G.I. Joe. Yeah. We are. Oh, so, so Baroness is on the rise. Ooh. That's what's great. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So you mentioned... This um, is fun. It, it really is in, incredible to watch these things. They were very well done. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, your children. What? You, you have oh, a, I have a son. You have a son. Yes, Fantastic. I have two grandkids. Oh my goodness! Well, congratulations. Yes, That's yes, a delight. Yes. The uh, the first one is already graduated from uh, high school and doing college, and the second one's going to graduate this year. That's She's great. Graduating. Congratulations. She's the That's so yeah. cool. Well, I don't know what I did, but anyway. Well, that's you, okay. you, you, were, I'm you the grandma. Ray, you're the grandma. So with that in mind, here's the obvious question. Did your son play with the Joe toys? Like, was that a thing? Well, I have to give something away here. My son had the original Joe. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. yes. That's awesome. So then and was when he... we were in England, we bought Tommy accessories because they had tommy in england oh, okay and so we bought a foot locker and we bought the when, did, when did you live in england i didn't or, 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 we, we oh went, just when you visiting went, oh, yeah okay, we just okay. we just went to visit yeah oh, that's so, very cool so sam spear who designed the doll mm -hmm. the large one that was inspired by barbie monetarily inspired by barbie yes um i sam spear signed one of the new large gi joes that's cool. And I gave it to Justin, yes. That's really, really yes. neat. That's really cool. I know. It yeah. is. It is. So did I met Sam Spear in, in Dallas. Oh. So so then did your so did your son did you said Justin? You did, yeah, and was, he, did, he was did he some was he then was he work? jazzed when he was like, wait a minute, my mom's doing the voice for oh, yeah. this he, toy he, that I grew he, up with? He still is. Oh, oh yeah, he, he he still is. He's oh, that's cool. That's crazy cool. He's cool. He has a fabulous voice himself. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. he working in the VO world? No. No, just, just knocks out the great voice. No, he, he just leaves he, a lot of amazing voicemails. He has a yeah, he has a, <laughs> a, a a spatial artistic ability. He's very manual. Oh, I love it. Manual dexterity. Oh yeah, he's he's a very interesting guy. Yeah, but he has a very good voice too. I love <laughs> it. So the Baroness here, she's on the she's on the move and she's working out her man. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, do you know that in the comic books they um, uh, they gave Baroness and Destro a daughter or a child? Oh dear! Yeah, she ended up having a child with Destro. Okay. Yeah. So they they did get together Fine. like long term. Yeah. I'm so excited. Well, at least for it's five one of the minutes. great it's okay. one of the great on again off again romances in the comic books. <laughs> okay. It really I is. know everybody thinks that's so cool. Okay. It really is. Okay. Because he was so dedicated. Cool. He was so dedicated to her in the, in the <laughs> comic continuity wise. <laughs> there are scenes when he's like. I've never shown my face to anyone else, and just it's. <laughs> I know. She's like, yeah. Oh, oh what's the line? Everybody always. This throw, I hear bells. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Well, that okay. comes into play. That love comes into play on this episode. We're going to see it in, in action later. Oh, okay. That love is what saves the day for the rest of the free world. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, for sure. Sakes alive. Oh, for sure. So she's zombified all the Joes right Oh, I right love now. it. I love it. I love and, it. And uh, they are like marching out of the compound uh, under her <laughs> command, <'cause, laughs> except for the three ladies, of course. Scarlet, oh, Lady J, and Cover Girl. Duke. Duke and Flint are in Cobra's power, Scarlet. It's funny. <laughs> Scarlet's like, oh, no, Duke. And Lady J has to remind her, yeah, Duke and Flint? 
like we both got boyfriends and no one's like no one's like what about clutch what about rock and roll what about snake eyes what oh, about no. what oh, about well. ricondo Never no mind. one it's our boyfriends are in trouble and cover girls going uh i don't i haven't given me a boyfriend yet so. <laughs> well will i be back in another episode I, yeah do you remember any because uh, I, I know you did a couple of, obviously you guys would do a lot of different voices on the show do you remember oh, any yeah. other you did Dusty's mom or something, right? Oh, I probably did. I, I kind of remember Major, I think it was Major Hooper from the first one. Okay. Because that was just basically me being, you know, yeah. brisk, brusque, and, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, no, I don't really. So, um, you were also on a, a multi-episode arc of Knott's Landing. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, I mean. I did a lot of strange things That's in the fun, 80s. though. I survived. Yeah. I got very nice Screen Actors Guild insurance from That's all great. those odds and ends. Yeah. And, and the Walla and the post Oh, yeah. And Street Hawk. No, oh, listeners, if you don't remember that. Street Hawk, I don't, I don't know if you have any memories oh, wait, of Street Hawk. wait, I was the judge. It was, yes, you were. It was about, uh, I have not seen the episode, but I remember the show. It was basically a, a dude who, it was like Knight Rider, but instead of yeah. a car, he In, had a motorcycle that was like a combat motorcycle. Yeah. Um, if it's the one I remember, you get there at five, they put on your makeup, they give you your outfit, and you're you're looking fairly fresh until noon. Yeah. Then they give you your close-up at 4 p.m., in which you'll look a little bit draggled, you know. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. Oh, well. No. It was good. It was good. I still get residuals from some of this stuff. Oh, that's great. There was a guy on Remington Steel, now I can't remember the actor's name, sorry, who played a woman in drag, and they I don't know why they didn't just harmonize his voice and give it some upper layers, but I went in and I did it. Oh. So you see, there's ADR. Right. Right, yeah. Some, no, that was too much sex in that sound. It was very deep. It was very kind of a down in there. You know, and when you see that married to the character on the screen, yeah. Well, we're going to go to commercial with Lady J in trouble. <gasps> we're going to be back with G. more Morgan Rock. after these messages. Hey, listeners, thank you for your continued support of the Joe on Joe podcast. We completed all the main episodes of the original cartoons, and now we're looking ahead to new ways to discuss the toy we all love, G.I. Joe. Be sure to go to patreon.com slash Joe on Joe pod to see how you can help support the future of the Joe on Joe podcast. We're going to be doing some more comic book reviews, one on one all star interviews and some very exciting special episodes to be revealed. Your support makes all of that possible. So please visit patreon.com slash Joe and Joe pod and help make it happen. Now back to the show. And here we back to G.I. Joe. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> We're back. <gasps> oh. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hello. It's, I always forget who has the scar. Tomax or Zamot. Oh, okay. It's funny. <gasps> oh, no. There, um, I've had friends of mine always bust my chops because, like, little things like that, I cannot nail oh, it down for the well, life of me. Even though, I mean, I've done the show for three years. I know shame on me. Three years. I'm staring <laughs> I'm at this kidding. in and out. I can never keep track of oh who's Tomax and who's Zaymot. Oh, no, that's Zaymot. Okay. Oh. So this is great. So she's got Tomax prisoner. You, I'm sorry, she. Let me be. Who's let she? me be a little more specific. Yeah. You have Tomax prisoner. Thank you. Very You're here much. right now, so let's be specific. Yes. You have Tomax prisoner. Yeah. So Zaymot wants to free his brother. Oh, okay. Right. So okay. that's why Zaymot <laughs> is kind of rebelling against the Baroness. Oh my goodness! You realize how many guns have been fired in this oh, show so yeah. far? Oh yeah, blue lasers, red lasers. Oh my heaven! That's so funny. when we first did this, uh, actually the guest on the because we, we've done this, we did, we've done, we've gone through all the episodes at this point. Oh. And the first time we watched this together, my wife was it because I wanted to get on this episode where okay. it was like a female, like strong female right. voice on it. Yeah. And one of the things, one of our takeaways was that we were like, the Baroness got this power and she just did exactly what Cobra did. Just like we wanted her to do more, like something <laughs> different. Like when you give her the reins, you do more than just attack G.I. Joe. Oh, like, like do I something see. crazy. Okay. And would you guys ever get scripts? The reason I bring it up is would you ever get scripts and go like, oh, the Baroness shouldn't do that? Or was it more of just, you, oh, just, no. you just did it? No, the scripts were cast in yeah. stone yeah. by the time we got them. No. Mm -mm. We might throw in a couple extra little, oh, 
<laughs> you know, fight noises, but no. And no, you did no, a little no. bit of writing as well. Well, no, actually. What I did was I, okay, take a Japanese cartoon, somebody does the translating, mm -hmm. and then in order to make the words fit in the mouth, they do what they call it, someone writes the adaptation. Oh. And I wrote a couple of the adaptations. To match the lip flap. Oh, right? my God. Was that, that was a nightmare? Was yes. Yes. We still can't attack in four, so we'll hurt Flint and the others. Yeah, that Perhaps really, really was. So here's the MacGuffin. Well, the anti-MacGuffin, I guess. <laughs> so this um, scientist uh, created this anti-vibrational thing that will oh, break the spell of the siren. Rats. Yeah. Someone's always someone's always here to foil your plans, Baroness. <laughs> Curses. <laughs> See, there's that there's that camaraderie. Just for no reason. They're just chanting Yo Joe. The leader, not you. If you put me under oh, the see, siren spell, Jester is gonna, no he's gonna feel, to share your he's gonna feel Only very betrayed a here. A man like Cobra Commander would wish to rule alone when the two of us can rule together. Oh, see, this is like a romance for the ages. Bells. This is like Cleopatra and uh, uh, huh? right. <laughs> Mark <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is great. So Zaymot's leading the Joes because he knows how to get in. There's the, the <laughs> snake combat armor. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do people ask you to sign? Because um, uh, the, the Baroness being like a smallish figure, do they ask you to sign her at all? Or is it mostly um, packaging? Or? Most people who ask for a signature, yeah, the packaging is very important. These are people that never played with the toys. Yeah. Oh, oh you yeah. You know, right, right, I, right, mean, right. I mean, my... Son had a yellow submarine that's long lost and long played with, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think, I think the kids that grew up probably bought fresh ones. Yeah, and then we signed the. I was one of those kids that um, absolutely played with them, but I, but no. I had a collector in my brain because I'm a big comic book collector, <laughs> so my toys are still very pristine. Oh, like if okay. if I was very, the, they never got left out in the dirt. The like, box is gone. Oh, the the boxes well, are gone. But, sorry, but the t like I still to this day know that I've only ever lost one figure, oh and it was my. a breaker that I left out and oh. like it got lost Ooh. in the very and. and yeah, that's literally it. One G.I. Oh Joe figure God, was ever quote unquote that, left in the yard. How many did you own? Oh, probably over a hundred. <gasps> yeah, I still have most of my figures. You're kidding? Yeah. yeah. Oh I mean, they God. made hundreds of different dudes, but I probably had near a hundred. Yeah, my parents were oh pretty my. good with that. This was my, this was like my <laughs> main <laughs> gift oh, range. Wow. You know, like I had some He-Man, I had some Transformers, okay. but all the energy went to G.I. Joe because okay. there was so, it was so much. There was, yeah. there was, and, and, but you're right. They're, and they were affordable. They're so little. Yeah, and they were very affordable. When I sign a Moonracer, I can sign the Transformers mm -hmm. right. character because they're big enough. Yes. You know, I sign on the arm or on yeah. the leg. Or, yeah. Um, you also, I mean, technically, uh, in the comic book, you're the first Cobra introduced. Because in the very yes. first comic book, you're you're on the train. You know, Baroness is on the train doing the kidnapping of the of, the, of Dr. Burkhart in the very beginning. You mm -hmm. you and Cobra Commander are driving the force yet. Mm -hmm. They hadn't introduced Esther mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, I mean, Baroness is just vital. What did you oh, think I when know. you what did you, oh, what did you think of what did you think of the movie the live action of her portrayal of, of I, Baroness? I didn't go. Oh, you didn't go because yeah. I am the Baroness. I love that. In case you were confused, um, and I love Serena Miller as an actor. Yeah, I she's absolutely great. adore her, but I have no desire. To go see. I get it. No, nope. I get it. I get it. Should I take this out of my ear? Oh, you can, you can, because that's it. The episode's over. The Baroness's oh. scheme was thwarted. Oh no! So how how did it feel to <laughs> see this stuff? Dilly. Yeah. I how did it feel to like... see this stuff after so long? I'm I'm amazed at at how good they are. They really are good. They look gorgeous. They really yes, they do. Yeah. The color is spectacular. The sound is wonderful. The layering of the sound. Mm -hmm. So you've got the sound effects, you've got the music, the music you've got the dialogue track, killer. absolutely. Uh, one of the biggest differences between this era and the, the DIC stuff um, that, that I never really put together Dick. Until, to, to the <laughs> Dick stuff yeah. until we started really analyzing it on the show is the music. Because with the Dick stuff, they, they just took 
like snippets of this and just found places to use it instead oh. of like sc- instead of really scoring the scene. Like it wasn't that right. tailored to the scene. Right. And it is so wow. visibly different. Like it really is palpably different. Where if you had put the scoring, like the traditional scoring of these are the emotional beats, let's lead right. to this and lead right. to that. It, that show could have been just just a bigger bigger experience. Right. Yeah. So Morgan, there's yeah. a bit that we do on my show mm-hmm. where my guests are, you know, non part. They're usually not a part of the actual production. Oh. I ask them if they themselves personally could be a member of the GI Joe team or Cobra team. Who would they be, and what would their code name be? Now oh. I feel like that's an odd question because you are the Baroness. I know. So, were you, if you Morgan Lofton were to join this universe? Would you still be the Baroness, or would you would you would you would you would you do something else in the world of Jojo Cobra? Would you be maybe a Cobra historian? Cobra historian. Sit down, Arthur. Sit down, Chris. (laughs) 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 Yes, I would. Yes, I'd kick butt. I feel like you'd be like a Cobra taskmaster, a a Cobra general. Oh yeah. Yeah. So in charge. I got it. You, you, Morgan Lofting, are one of the women. That was in this episode. Oh, yeah. That were being commanded by the Baroness. And now, over the years, you've risen in rank. So now you're one of the generals of the Cobra Army. Oh, well, I thought I always was. Well, yeah, well, of course. What? Of course. And, Who are you again? And would, your, <laughs> and would your name be, would you still be, would you still be the Baroness? Or we, 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 can we? Oh, I like. Yeah, so you're the thought, best. I've never of thought course. about having. Yes. Plus, when I sign my name, I sign the with a capital T. And the Baroness with a capital B. There's no such thing as Baroness. It's, it's the, the Baroness. Baroness. That's thank you very much. That is so fantastic. Yes. I love that. <laughs> this oh. has just been this has been everything well, I could have Joe, ever Joe, dreamed Joe, of. Joe, Joe. Yes. Yeah, this is really delightful. Thank you I've, so much for being I've on the had show. An absolutely fabulous time. Oh, love it. Is there anything you'd like to say to the to the fans of G.I. Joe? I'm I love you all that you're out there and that they're new fans of G.I. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's so great. So <laughs> great. Thank you so much. And listeners, thank you guys so much. Uh, and Morgan, now you Joe. And Joeing who? is half the battle. Oh, oh who? <laughs> <laughs>